Welcome back to episode 5 in the how to design a bike frame using CAD series. I must get a better name. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us. If you haven't already watched the first few episodes, they're in the description below. Um, in today's episode, we're going to cover in-context modelling. So in the previous episode, we covered assemblies uh, and we touched on in-context modelling a little bit. But in this episode, we're going to delve into it a little bit more um, and kind of show why it's so critical to help develop new products within the, the CAD software. So we'll jump straight into it. Um, so like I say, if you watched the previous episode, you should have seen or you should have got to kind of a similar stage here where you've got a, a front triangle that you've gone through and modified each of the tubes from the kind of base mock-up model that we had into something that's a little bit more refined and a bit more similar, if you remember, um, to the kind of base picture that we imported at the very start. So. This is now an assembly, it's a front triangle assembly. Uh, I've gone ahead and modeled up a rear triangle in the same manners again. So if you if you go back and look at episodes two, three, and four in particular, that should help you mock up a, a rear triangle. Or if it's a hard tail frame, then essentially you, 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 it'll all be in one kind of assembly the same way as this front triangle would be. So what we've done then is pieced it all together in one general assembly. So you'll see that we've brought in our initial sketches here um, with which to kind of drive the whole assembly. Um, so again, if you saw our configurations episode, you'll see that we were able to configure the models to a static and dynamic option um, or setting essentially. So we've brought in the front triangle, we've brought in the rear triangle and we've set those up in that way. Um, what I'll maybe do is I'll just delete out the rear triangle and bring that in again now uh, just to show you. So. We're importing, uh, with any assembly, importing um, a part, but it's not a part, it's an assembly we're gonna bring in. So we're gonna look for the rear triangle assembly. There is no configuration, it's just one size on this. So we're just gonna select that. Uh, and again, like we touched on in the past, it's in its static position now. We can obviously hover around and move it into different places. Um, so we're gonna accept that. The reason we're putting it out in free space essentially is because we want to add a mate so that it pivots around the main kind of main pivot assembly. Um, so what we'll do is just check that the, yeah, it's all joined together so you can drag any tube or any component and the whole thing will move. So what you'll see as well that's sort of hidden in there is the sketches that drive the whole rear triangle. So that can be quite useful when it comes to mates um, because if you don't know, you know, sometimes it's easier to just mate everything to the center plane um, rather than if you're going to be chopping and changing and moving some of the parts to work out spacing. Uh, it can be a little bit, it can trip you up if you mate certain faces to other faces and then the width of something changes. So um, what I tend to do is leave the center sketches on and just use those. Um, so again, we can find um, the suspension um, sketch. So what we're gonna try and do is mate the main pivot of this rear triangle to this suspension sketch. You could just mate it to these and, and space it, but as I've just explained, it's not maybe an ideal way to do it. So we're gonna pick a revolute mate we're gonna hover over this, uh, which is again in the center plane of the rear triangle. So that's the first one, make sure it's selected in there. It's highlighted red because we've only got one selection. We need obviously more than one selection, at least two to make a, a mate work. So, and then we can see the center line again, make sure we hover over it. If we mated it to this face, um, it would work, but you'll find that the rear triangle would be offset um, to that. So we don't wanna do that. So we'll delete that out and we're gonna select this. Uh, and because, and then we can accept. So because that was a revolute, Mate, I know I'm getting into assemblies more. This um, whole rear rear triangle should still, yeah, you can see that the mate is working. So the other mate that we want to do is obviously where the rear triangle um, attaches to the shock. So we'll wind it back out of the way um, to a point where we can see both features. Um, so obviously one being here on the suspension sketch, you can see it's highlighted here, and then this obviously being in the rear triangle. So. Again, we want a revolute mate. Um, the reason we want a revolute mate for this is because obviously as the suspension compresses, there's, there's a little bush in the shock and that rotates. Uh, if we put a fixed mate or a fastened mate in there, uh, the suspension wouldn't actually compress um, because it would be held rigid at whatever angle the, the shock was added. So make sure we put a revolute. Actually, I'll do that as an example just to show you. So we'll put a revolute mate here and we're gonna select this section. So they all line up, we hit accept um, and then Let's put compressed on and we'll, this is where it will fail. It just won't, it shouldn't compress. Um, yep, so you can see the suspension sketch is compressed, but the rear triangle hasn't. And it's, if we try and move it, it's, it's solid. So what we can do to fix that, we don't have to necessarily delete it. You can see them here that they're highlighted in red. 
Um, we'll go in and edit this fastened mate uh, and we can just change from the drop down to Revolut. Um, and you can actually, it moves things, this is a bit of a weird nuance with Onshape, but it's not to be alarmed. If it moves everything, it's not necessarily the end of the world. This mate still exists, but it's just temporarily, you know, suppressed that to show, you know, what it's doing at the minute. So before you accept, just to check that everything's working, you can click on solve and it should go back to where it was. So that's all working fine. Tick accept, and then we can flick between our configurations to make sure that that's working. Um, Okay, so we've brought a rear triangle in. We've got the two mates that we need because it's a single pivot. It's only got a shock mounted here, so it's it's only the two mates we need. So that's kind of, again, touching on assemblies a little bit more um, off the back of last week's episode. But what we're going to do now essentially is model the hardware that we're, that we're going to require for this, this main pivot. So we need a couple of things. We need to, um, some bearings. Then we need some spacers to separate the bearings from the front triangle. And then we need a, a left and a right. Um, main pivot shaft uh, and, and, and a, some sort of fastener on the other side. So the first thing we're going to do in this assembly is bring in our bearings. So we can see the bearings in here. Um, I've actually saved those out as a composite part. We'll do a separate episode on composite parts, but um, for now we'll just click on this twice because we want two bearings. We'll drop them in space and we'll accept and let's make some space. So again, you can use a fixed uh, fastened mate or a revolute mate. For this, it doesn't really matter. Um, what we're going to do is select the face that it's going to butt up against, which is this face. Oh, oh, try not to lose our model. Um, and then we're going to also select the face of the bearing that would sit uh, against it. Um, I'll apologize for the glitchiness. We've just had a power cut. I've already tried to record this episode twice, so... Um, I think things are a little bit slow on our um, internet. Um, okay, so that's the first bearing and it's been placed, mated in the right place. Um, and you can see obviously there's a gap here where there should be. That's where we're going to have a little spacer and then there'll be room for our hardware. So we'll go ahead and do the same with the other bearing. Um, just make sure that it selects. Yep. And then spin it around and find that the seat of where the bearing is going to sit and accept. Okay. So this is where we get into in-context modeling. And you can see, is, again, these are asymmetric, They're obviously because of the drive side and where the chin ring is going to be, this pivot um, needs to be kind of offset inbound, um, whereas on the non-drive side, there's less of a constraint there. So. so, OK, we've got our assembly. And from within the assembly, and if you saw the last episode, we were able to edit in context a certain part that was in a part studio in assembly. We're pretty much going to do the same thing, but we don't have the part to edit. We have to create the part. So what we can do from within this assembly is click on this, which is create part studio in context. It's going to ask us to pick an origin. You can use mate connectors to as an origin, but I actually find it's kind of more useful and helpful to just use the main origin from this assembly. That's what will allow the part to be in the right place when we import it as well. Um, not that that's super critical, but it does make a bit of a difference. Um, so we're going to accept the uh, origin. Okay, and now we've got, if you look at where we are, we're in Part Studio 2. That's a brand new Part Studio that's just been created, and you can see the context of the assembly in behind. Um, so insert and go to assembly, that's what we would do if we had the part, but we haven't modeled the part yet. So this is where we can start. We can either start by sketching on one of the existing planes, or what's more useful in these circumstances is to sketch on maybe this face. So we're going to design the washers to start with. So this is where the washer is going to butt up against. So we'll start a sketch here. This highlights a kind of purpley color. That shows that you're sketching on an in-context face. So if, if we ever went in and modified, say, this main pivot part um, and made it narrower, wider, changed the diameter, anything that is sketched on that face or is has a relation in context to that part will then will then give you the option to update that. So it's a really powerful and useful tool and it helps you keep your models and your part designs up to date so nothing gets kind of left behind or forgotten about. So we've selected that face, uh, we're going to select the right plane and then we're going to put the sketch in there. So we're going to select, uh, say, 15.1 because it's got to be a 15 mil shaft that goes through it. And then the outer side of that might be, you can see our bearing there. So let's say 22 and a half. Um, OK, so that's our sketch. We're simply going to extrude that. Um, now, we could pick a dimension if we knew the distance, but again, if we tell it that it needs to be four millimeters or three and a half millimeters, and then something later down the line changes, this part won't be updated. It will always stay at, at four, four millimeters. So what we can do is select up to face, and then what we're going to try to do is find the inside face of this bearing, because that's where it's 
in real life that's where it's going to go to so we'll select that face and what it does is creates the extrude for you and um, so we're just going to accept that um, okay there we go we've got our part you can see it here we're going to call it um, main pivot washer and we know it's three and a half millimeters but we could you could name it afterwards actually naming it now is probably not a good idea in terms of the width because uh, it might change so that's something you'd want to go back and do at a later date um, okay so the next thing we need to do is to insert that if we don't insert it and we toggle between the context you'll actually lose that that context um, screen so you'd have to then edit in context from the assembly it gets a bit complicated but as long as you remember to insert the part and it's asking you which part it knows there's only one part so it's already prompting you to to put that part in so we'll hit accept there and what have we got now this part this washer that we've just inserted is now in this assembly now it isn't mated in place it's just there so we could either fix it like we talked about or we could move it out of the way and good practice would be to mate it in place so we'll use a revolute mate we're going to go against this edge uh, and then essentially it's going to be uh, this is where it starts to get a little bit confusing so we'll, we'll accept that so now we can see we've got this washer in here yeah we might have added some chamfers to it or something like that but you can do but for the purposes of this we know that that's correct so um, actually what we need is we should have exactly the same spacing on the other side so we could either insert another washer or we can you can copy uh, this entity um, which is a kind of quicker way of doing it you can just hit copy and then paste mp washer so you, it's a quick way rather than having to insert every time so uh, and we're going to just do the same thing this is the face that we want um, an edge or a face doesn't really matter for the purposes of these and then we're going to make it in here on the other side okay um, what we can do at this point is just do a quick section view to make sure that everything works out the way we expect so We'll scan in there just to make sure there are no gaps you know if, if there was a gap on this side then we could understand that perhaps the the width of the distances weren't quite correct um which is always kind of helpful to, to know but that this all looks fine um so we'll exit out of that okay so we've got our main pivot washers we've got our bearings in there the last thing we need to do now is obviously design our our main pivot shaft um so we're going to follow exactly the same um process what we'll do is we'll just rename this part studio as main pivot washer just for good housekeeping go back into our general assembly and follow exactly the same process so create part studio select the origin and hit accept and it's exactly the same process now um, what you could what you could do is if you wanted to revolve the main pivot um, design uh, or the main main pivot part um, you could sketch it as a revolve in which case you would just offset a plane up to the center of this and um, you could use that point as a reference and then sketch on the top uh, but we'll just do the, the same process we did last time so again we're gonna we know the main pivot shaft is going to butt up against that interface the inner interface of this bearing so we'll use that as our reference point again it means if the bearing moves or um, changes width or something like that then the main pivot shaft will be updated um, incidentally it means that if that bearing is deleted from the assembly and replaced with a different size bearing then we will lose this context um, so all of a sudden the main pivot should highlight as as un, you know undefined or un, unconstrained um, and prompt you to go in and change that so that's something to be aware of obviously if you if you know this bearing is not going to change then this in context is a safe a safe bet but if there's a risk then what you could do is is model it off this face um up to the face of the bearing there's no real easy way if you're you know if you want to make sure that this is correct yeah you kind of just need to remember these things as you go through so um so okay let's uh, let's sketch so what we'll start with is the shaft we know it's going to be a 15 mil shaft it's then going to have um so i think this is a 28 mil um, bore so we'll go 27.9 um I want to increase that clearance slightly okay so that's the start of a sketch that we've got uh, we can accept that and then we can go straight into extrude so I'm going to extrude the center first and um, the other way and what we're going to do is extrude it right up to the face of the other bearing uh, and then we're going to back it off a little bit because we don't want that coming right the way up and bottoming out so we've we've got one mil offset so we'll accept that there's our, our main pivot shaft but obviously it hasn't got a head so when you extrude or do a feature with a sketch generally it hides the sketch after that so sometimes you need to turn it back on again um, and then we're going to extrude this head section and we also want the center um, this can sometimes get a little bit, little bit complicated um, 
there we go so it's all solid so we're going to want this to i would imagine come up to the face of the cnc part um, it, you might even want it to protrude out a little bit and then we can put a chamfer on so we're going to do that okay and again when we accepted that extrude we it was an add so it was adding to the shaft and um, just a reminder not to select new or it's good to check those things because you would have essentially two parts then the shaft and the head which we don't want um, so we'll add that and we've got still one one part so we'll finish that off put a say a, a bit of a chamfer in there let's say four millimeters uh, you could go ahead and put your whatever tool um, interface that you're going to do in there um, okay so we've got that we're going to name that uh, main pivot shaft uh, and we know again if we make any changes to this because it's in context it will update automatically so I'll try and show you that um, shortly so again we'll insert that into the model and again we'll move it out and stick a Revolute made on there so we know that's going to be that face and we want this face if it will select yeah okay so we now know that because of the way we designed it oh take those off we're going to click these two faces and then select measure you can see it here the parallel distance is one millimeter so we have a one millimeter offset what I'll do to show you how in context works I suppose is if we move this bearing so there should be a mate on this bearing um, I can find uh, yes this side you can hit show mates uh, there we go that's the mate hidden in there so we're going to edit that um, oh wherever it went let's edit that okay so just for the purposes of this we're going to offset it by two millimeters um, the wrong way okay um, so we can now see that that bearing, I know this isn't real world, but this, this is just as an example, you know, we should now see a difference of uh, three millimeters, which we do. But because we designed this main pivot shaft in context with the assembly and it's referenced from this bearing, um, we can update that. It won't update automatically, um, but what we can do is go back in to this part studio, which we should have renamed um, main pivot shaft. Um, what we'll do is we'll toggle here, go back into in context. You can see here that nothing has changed in the context that the shaft was designed in. So this bearing looks like it's still got a one millimeter offset when it should be, you know, in real life, we know it should be three millimeters. So what you actually have to do is click the three dots beside the in context uh, and update context. And when you do that, you'll see that the bearing moves out and the shaft has also moved out with it. So we still have that one millimeter distance but we know that the bearing is has moved out and then when we click back in you can either click go to assembly here or you can just go back to it this is handy because it's it directs you straight there and um, so we can see that that has now carried through and again just to prove our point we'll go back into that section view that we had and we'll see that the bearing should actually be offset from the seat yeah so you can see there there's a bit of a difference so we just want to fix that uh, obviously that's not something that we want to do um, so we'll just take that offset delete that and yeah that's moved the bearing back in but obviously until we manually go in I'll take section view off until we manually go in and update this main pivot shaft it will stay in its previous state um, essentially so yeah you'll see that's not going to functionally work it won't allow you to bottom out on the on the bearing um, or clamp down on the bearing so we'll go back in repeat the process make sure we select in context and then update the context and everything's moved back in um, okay, so that's done. We can now, because this part's already in there, we can toggle on context off. And this is the difference and the beauty, I suppose, of you know modeling individual parts in their own part studio in context with an assembly rather than modeling multiple parts in one part studio like we did in, in sort of episodes one, two, and three. Um, that's useful to get started and get the fundamentals together, but actually it, it becomes very difficult. You know, you look at this, okay, it's not a complicated part, but there are only f sort of four features in the in the feature tree. Um, so if it was a more complicated part, at least it's, it's solely being designed and developed in one part studio. So it just makes the tree a little bit more straightforward and, and keeps life a bit more, a bit more simple. Um, you could, I guess you could design the nut um, for this in the same part studio because they're not going to be overly complicated parts I don't really see any negative to that there's not it's not really bad practice um, or you could just do exactly what we did and and sort of design the other side in its own you know in context um, part studio so we'll do that um, so again just repeating the process follow the 
select the origin and create a new part. We're going to create a sketch. Now we could, I suppose you could create the this sketch either on this face um, and then we could offset it, but it's probably easier to select the bearing again um, and then we just repeat the process. So we're going to want, say, a 10 mil this time and then I think we had 27.9, wasn't it? Um, we can just go that way to check. Yeah. So we've got that. We're going to extrude those uh, out by, well, I think we went up to the face of this section and then we offset by one mil outboard. We'll do that. And then we'll turn this back on and we're going to, ah, uh, you'll see here we've actually not selected this center section as well. We want that to be solid. Uh, and then we're going to extrude. Sometimes it's actually really useful to just turn the part off if you need to get at a sketch that's behind it. Um, so we'll do that. Turn that off and then obviously it won't allow you to add unless the part's turned on because it doesn't see it, um, I suppose. So we'll turn that part back on now that we've selected that face. And let's say 25 millimeters is fine for that. So we'll just accept that. Oh, it hasn't accepted. Yeah, if it hasn't, if it doesn't work because we've toggled between, you just need to make sure that it's asking you, you know, you're, you're explaining to the software that you're going to add this to another part, but it hasn't recognized which part. So we select merge. You can either click on this or click on this and then it, it all goes blue. Um, so we know that that's correct. So what we'll do before we finish modeling um, all this, it's quite good practice to just go back in and insert it into the in-context assembly. Um, and again, we can, we haven't really got, yeah, well, let's put the mate on it now. The difficulty with that is if we put the mate on at this stage, um, because we're quite early on in the, you know, the feature tree and design um, decisions for this, we may end up, you know, this, this, um, edge that we're selecting that may end up disappearing if we were to put a fillet on there or a chamfer all of a sudden that edge wouldn't exist so you might find that when you come back into this assembly that that mate has crashed so it's always worth going down and checking you shouldn't see any red um marks in your assembly all of especially when it comes to the mate features you don't want any of these to be highlighted red because that means there's a, a fault or an error um, with them so so we've now got the bones of our main pivot hardware in there we've got our washers in behind and we've got our shaft or or not uh, at the end of it there, um, or screw, sorry. Uh, so we'll go back in and we'll finish editing this. So on the on the other side, we put a, a chamfer in there. So let's do the same thing. Um, I think it was, a, let's go five mil there, one mil by that. Um, yeah, okay. We would probably put a, a small chamfer on the end of this as well. Um, you'd probably come back and thread that. And then, yeah, you'd, you would end up obviously wanting to put a, a hex head or something on this part. Um, so we'll do that and we'll say that's going to be uh, five millimeters and we'll just remove that. Right. So you can start to see it, it comes together um, pretty quickly and then obviously on our drive side. Um, so again, to find that part, which sometimes if you've got a lot of different part studios open, you can obviously use folders to try and um, tidy things up, but we know that that's our main pivot shaft. You could just right click on the part. If you didn't want to find it in the in the kind of tabs at the bottom, you can just right click and edit in context. Just make sure that you are going into the same context. You can name these contexts. So at the minute, they just the default is context one and context one refers to this assembly. You know, it's, it's, it's this general assembly. So um, because what you can do is if this part is used somewhere else in a different assembly, you can edit it in context to that. Um, it starts to get a bit confusing, so just make sure you're always going back into the same context. Um, and yeah, like I say, you can rename it in here, so you could call this your your general assembly um, context. Uh, okay, so we need to finish modeling this. We want to put uh, a bore in there, make it 10 mil for now, obviously. Um, move that. And then I guess we'd put a, a chamfer on there too. So that's kind of the bones of it. Um, if you're being politically correct, you would still you, you'd still want to put your socket in here for your uh, Allen key. We've got six millimeters. Move that. Okay, very crudely, um, we've done that. So we've now got a main pivot. Um, assembly uh, essentially and we've got all the mates in place so again when we flick through our comp um, our different configurations there shouldn't be any faults nothing should should come up and, and we can check again the section view is always super handy for 
you can show that everything looks like it's in the right place um, and it hasn't kind of got any error. So that all looks good. Um, looks good to me. So we'll turn that off. Um, go back to our normal state. And that's that's pretty much it. So you would do the same, um, you know, the rear triangle, front triangle, all these tubes, like we said in the in episode four, we, we showed you how to use the top tube, bring it in and create miters um, for, for that in context. And, and it's exactly the same process now. So um, what you'll see is when we created the rear triangle, this was all, um, you know, we start with an assembly. So we create a new assembly. And then what we did was bring in the image and sized it and then we bring in all of these sketches and um, so if I can I hide all this stuff possibly not and um, you know so we're starting with a big library of sketches in the assembly and that's actually a really useful way of modeling stuff that's going to have to be related to each other so when we're trying to do a rear triangle for example everything has to flow into the dropouts and flow into the shock mount so that sketch is quite a good way of doing that and then what we'll have done was exactly the same process. We'll have created a part studio in context with this assembly, which at the time will have just been that flat sketch. Um, and for example, the seat stay tube, it's exactly how we would have done it. We would have created this in context. and We would have maybe started on the right plane or started lofting between faces. So you can see now you've got two seat stay tubes um, because there's, sym you know, there's symmetry there, they're just mirrored across. So we, essentially all you do is start working on one, on one tube um, and we've got, look how short the feature tree is. You know, we've got quite a complex a sub-assembly with a rear triangle there, but you know, we've got maybe 10 features in this feature tree and that's given us you know, a left and a right version of, the, of, a, of, a, of a seat stay tube and the same was applied with all the other components in there. And it's not to say as well, once you've mirrored this, you can't then go and start editing left and right. So for the dropouts, for example, because there are differences there, one has a UDH interface and the other doesn't, you can always make changes afterwards to, to both left and right. Um, they would be within the same part studio then obviously. So, but, but again, it, it's, it's not too difficult. You could, kept, you could have kept them separate um, as well. But the, the possibilities are fairly endless um, with this. But I think what's, what's super important is to just really understand and get your head around how powerful in-context modeling is. Um, and yeah, once you kind of cracked it, it, it makes, you know, it, it really heightens your skills and makes designing the bikes a lot more, or any product for that matter, a lot more um, manageable and less of a, less of a kind of complicated stress fest. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully that um, has helped uh, understand that. There's probably a stack more stuff that we could cover. Um, if you've got questions, do let us know. If you haven't already, check out some of the other episodes and videos that we've done. And yeah, I think we've kind of finished this as a frame model example. What I'll maybe do is, is pick another bike from another manufacturer and try and model that and, and add in some different tools and features and explain those uh, in the process. So if you've got any ideas of products that you would like us to kind of use as a, as a test bed or an example, do let us know in the comments or on, on, our, uh, on our social media. And yeah, thanks for watching and um, yeah, we'll see you on the next one.